Hey there, welcome back to the Bootstrap 4 Alpha tutorial. My name is Brad Hussey from bradhussey.ca and codecollege.ca. Thanks again for joining me. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to code a beautiful startup style website using Bootstrap 4. All right, so here we are looking at our uh, end result here. This is what we're gonna be building. Uh, it's, I'm just going to run through it really quickly with you and then I'll show you, we're going to jump in and start coding it up. So we've got our nav bar here. We've got a nice stage section. I call this the stage rather than the cover in this example. It's just, I like, I like that, uh, naming convention. Uh, and then we've got a series of features and this is using very, very common startup style conventions. You see a lot of startup websites have this sort of look to it. You've got like a double column here, two columns, you got an image or a video and then the, something explaining it, something very simple. And then the background you'll see always sort of changes, sort of, uh, you know, alternates in color or shade so that it kind of gives a little bit more texture to the design. And the background is also full width while the content is within a container, as you can see. So we've got a few features here. Uh, it's totally nonsensical. I just made all this stuff up. Um, and I'm using screenshots from different random websites as well, but, uh, it gives the idea, you know, it shows you what the startup could look like. And so for example, we have like a quote here from, uh, I have a silly picture of me, uh, and this is me giving a, uh, testimonial of this specific startup. And then just some more examples here, more features, more backgrounds, and then finally a call to action at the end, toss some money our way, please. hundred percent, no money back guarantee. And then a footer. So we've got, it's pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy, uh, but we're going to jump in and we're going to start coding it. So let's jump into our code editor. And what I need you to do is start off by creating a startup.html file and a startup.css file. Once you got those in there, we're good to go. Now in your startup.html file, we need to copy the basic bootstrap structure, uh, the HTML, just the basic HTML page uh, to work from. So I'm just going to go to my index.html file and I'm going to copy the header or the, sorry, not the header, the top section, doc type down to body. I'm going to paste that in there. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to clean that up a little. And then I'm going to go back to my index.html file here, jump back down to the very bottom, and I'm going to copy from HTML up to the jQuery, copy that. Let's head back to here. And we're good to go. There we go. Now I'm going to save this, and we have the basic structure, and we're going to start off uh, by not making the same mistake uh, and we're going to hook in our startup.css here so we don't forget about that make changes and wonder why it's not showing up and then we're going to start jumping in and we're going to code our nav bar okay so to get that nav bar in there we're going to go to our components here in the bootstrap documentation and head down to nav bar that'll take you to the nav bar section of the site uh, and it gives you everything you need to know about the bootstrap nav bar in bootstrap 4. So I do suggest reading through this documentation. It's always good to know this stuff, all the different options available to you. Uh, but what we're going to specifically use in this uh, tutorial, this version of the startup site we're building is the responsive nav bar. The responsive nav bar basically just has the toggler, uh, the toggleable sort of, um, you know, when you shrink the site, uh, you get that little sandwich icon that lets you click on it when you're on a mobile device to expand the navigation. It looks something like this. There it is, click that and you get responsive nav bar like that. So we're basically just gonna copy that and make a couple small changes. So go ahead and copy that to your clipboard and go back to your startup.html and paste that in uh, within your body tag there. And so here we have the nav bar copied from the documentation there. There's a responsive nav bar. We're gonna make a few changes though because currently let me just save this and we'll see what it looks like, make sure it works. Here it is, um, but we're gonna have a few different things as you can see, we're gonna have the the navigation items far to the right and a different logo and obviously a different color and it needs to be full width and everything like that. So we're going to start off here in the nav and we're going to say nav bar dash fixed dash top because I want it to be stick, uh, stuck to the top the whole time while you're scrolling down. Now I'm going to save that. And the next thing that you want to do, you can leave this the target. I mean, if you want to change this to something else, uh, basically if you change the target, to something, you just need to change the ID to something else. So if you want it to be a bit more relevant, maybe we'll maybe we'll do that. Startup navbar, copy that, change it in here. That will make that relationship, uh, that'll establish that relationship and then that uh, toggler will work with the navbar. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna take the brand 
outside of the collapse, the toggle, the toggleable section. This div here is the toggleable uh, content. So when it shrinks to mobile size, uh, basically that everything within there will hide within that little sandwich icon. I want that logo or the brand to always be visible. So we'll just take it out of there and put it outside of that element under the button uh, and before the collapse div. Now I'm going to change this uh, from just text to an actual image. So we're going to say image source will be image and logo. Sorry, not lady guitar logo dot PNG. The alt text will just say startup dot logo is what it is called. And I'm going to give it a height in here. I'm going to say height 26 because it is uh, very large. It's, it's double that size because it's a retina screen I'm using um, to make it nice and sharp. I'm going to shrink that to half the height. So it looks sharp on retina screens. And so it fits properly in that nav bar. So now I'm going to save that. We'll have a quick little check here to see if it looks about right. There we go. Now we want to move this over to the far right and we want to add a button, a little sign up button. So let's uh, change a few of these. So home features, pricing, let's say blog, why not? And we're going to add one more nav item. So copy nav item, paste it and change a uh, class nav link. Take that out and say BTN and BTN dash primary. And then this will just say sign in. And now to make it float to the far right, all you need to do on the nav bar nav here on this UL is say pull dash SM dash right. And that's another bootstrap for utility responsive class uh, that basically before in bootstrap three, you just say pull right or pull left and it would float it left and right. And it would be floated no matter the screen size. And it would always be a problem when you would shrink down to your mobile size on your screen, on your, on your iPhone or something like that, th these elements would still be floated and, and it would kind of mess with the layout and you'd have to specifically go in, create a media query, target that to specific um, div or whatever, and then unfloat it. But they now have modified those pull classes to specifically uh, be related um, to screen size. So pull SM right, this means it will always be floated to the right even on small screen sizes and up. But you can change this if you want it to only float on large screen sizes, LG, or medium screen sizes and up, MD. But I'm gonna say SM. If I wanted it to be XS, then it would be on even the smallest screen size. But SM basically means uh, you know small screen size, but once you're on mobile devices, it won't be floated anymore. So that's how that works. Save that, and we're gonna go over to our browser here. Refresh and there we go. That looks that looks absolutely perfect. Now we're gonna add our stage. This is pretty straightforward. Head back to our code editor. Very simple markup in this one. You might be surprised. We're gonna add a div with the ID of stage. And within there we'll have a div with the ID of stage caption. And then a level one heading. And this is another thing that we haven't done in Emmet yet. If you want to add a sibling, so what if I wanted to add an element that's uh, a sibling but not like a child of the level one heading? Well, you just say plus. That just means add a sibling element, paragraph tag. And plus, add a sibling element, a tag with the class of BTN and the class of BTN-LG and the class of BTN-success. Hit tab. There it is right there. So stage caption, H1, P, and A. Level one heading, we're going to say... Uh, well, it's going to have the class of display dash three. That's a bootstrap four class makes it large and uh, like a display style header. That's handy. Harry stick it in the startup dot logo. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting these, you're going to see a lot of random taglines throughout the entire startup site that we're going to build. And I'll show you where I got that here in a moment. I see startup logo. Here's another one. I see startup logo in your future. And then I'm just going to say sign up now. Now, if you're wondering where I get these, I'll show you right now. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny. Okay. So we'll fix this. Don't worry. Uh, I just refreshed and this is good. This is the stage markup so far. It's terrible looking, but don't worry. We'll fix it. Now, all you need to do to get those taglines is, um, slogan generator, uh, and Shopify has a free slogan maker, shopify.ca. You've all heard of Shopify. I'm sure. Free slogan maker to discover catchy slogan ideas for your brand. So enter a word like your logo or, you know, if you're selling dog leashes or, or whatever, uh, I put startup.logo, generate slogans, and they literally create like a thousand 
just random slogans. So we want to be the Smith startup logo. That's a terrible one. Made in Scotland from startup logo. Just do startup logo. Doing it right before your startup logo. Startup logo, first class. So just I just copied a bunch of these because because some of them are just totally nonsensical. Here we are. Now let's go back to our markup here. And we've we've added all the markup. The markup is all good. Now we can go into our CSS and we're probably gonna need to do a little bit of styling to make that look good. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping uh, here. HTML and body. We want this to be height 100 percent And we want the body. And I want to use my uh, one of my kind of favorite uh, styles here is the WebKit font smoothing and text rendering. It kind of makes things, uh, just smooths things out uh, and makes the, the font or the text look a little bit more crisp. And it's a little bit of a, some people don't like this style. Some designers and developers don't like this style because um, you know, in certain cases it's, it's not very effective or it makes the, the font a little bit too skinny and hard to read. But you can use your judgment. A lot of people only use it on headers but I typically will apply it to everything and uh, I'll check to see if something's hard to read and I'll change it otherwise. But uh, in this case, you could just throw it on there. Uh, we're gonna change the color to 6C6F73 and uh, we're gonna do some uh, styling of the headings. I'm gonna say color triple three, triple threat. Nope, just triple three. And level six, actually we're not gonna style H6 in this one, we're gonna style it down here. This one is going to say text transform. What text transform uppercase? Woo. Font weight, bold, getting crazy over here. Font size, 0 0.8 rem, letter spacing. We're going to space those letters out just a little bit on the, on the level six heading, 0 0.1 rem. Now, while I have you here, let's just add a few more styles. We're going to style the image. We're going to make that max width 100%. Uh, that's going to come up where it's going to come up eventually where we're going to need those uh, images to be responsive block quote. I'm styling the class of block quote because we're going to be using a block quote later in the site, but I just want to get it out of the way. Now font size 1.6 rem color triple three border none padding zero. That's removing all the block quote styles of bootstrap bootstrap adds their own block quote styles and I don't like them. So this is how we remove them, remove the border, remove the padding, change the color, change the font size. Everything's all good. And, and then there's one more thing regarding block quote, block quote dash footer. That is a bootstrap class uh, and it doesn't have any margin and it's a little bit too jammed up. Um, the, the footer is too jammed up in the, in the block quote itself. So I'm just going to say margin one rim zero zero. And so that's all for the housekeeping styles. Have those called copied out. And now we're actually going to get into the good stuff. So we're going to style the stage and we're going to give it a background URL of image slash stage dot JPG. I got that all queued up center center. No repeat background size cover. We're going to cover the entire uh, width and it's going to keep that image nice and um, kind of restrained and cropped in the right dimensions. Color will be white height 100% width 100% and we're going to use flex box to center it vertically um, in, in the middle of that uh, stage. So we're going to say display flex align items center. So it's going to align all the items within the stage to center. So now we need to target that stage dash caption. And in here, we're going to say font size 1.4 rem font weight 200. So it's going to be quite light max width. I want the max width of the stage caption to be 60 rem. Now 60 rem is roughly, well, did we set a font size up here? No, we didn't. So 60 rem, 60 times uh, 16 font size. So 960, interesting enough. 960 pixels, essentially what the max width of the stage caption. I don't want it to be too wide because I have a really wide screen. Uh, I don't want it to be full width. I want it to be kind of constrained a little bit. And then margin zero auto. That will margin zero auto it. I could also say uh, width 100%, but then I'm kind of screwing with this. So margin zero auto, that's gonna center in the middle of the screen horizontally while display flex will actually display uh, it the vertical it will center it vertically and then text align center okay now one more style here for the stage caption and then it will look ace stage caption h1 
That's the level one heading. Color white. I'm gonna make it font weight bold. So I'm gonna bold that display because uh, we use display three, but it's, it's a light font weight and I don't like it in this case. So text transform uppercase. So save this and check it out in your browser. Let's see what this turns into. Turns into that. So that's what our styles do. We got that background image. It's covered using background cover. We got a huge uh, slogan here, little subtitle, a button, everything centered vertically and horizontally. And it's got that max width of 60 RAM or 960 pixels. So that if you have a really wide screen, it stays that width until it becomes responsive down here and then it will do its own thing. And so that is the nav bar and the stage. We're gonna stop right there uh, because in the next uh, tutorial video, we're gonna go through and we're gonna start coding up these sections right here. So we're gonna start getting these, we're gonna start styling those and I'll see you in that video. Mm -hmm.